Firstly, I'm washing the whole page with water. And then using May Green from Shimmin Care to paint like this. This will help to visually separate the light and dark areas for the following steps. So the inside part will be the light area, and we'll keep this part blank without adding any extra colors throughout the whole painting process. Secondly, I'm adding some cascade green from Daniel Smith in the dark area. This paint is highly dispersive, as you can see the color is spreading quickly inwards towards the blank area. This can be a bit problematic, as we don't want the bright center to get too stained. So if this happens, to save your art, you can use a clean dry brush to absorb some color outwards like this. And also you don't have to use exactly the same paint as mine, I'm just showing you this as an example of what to do in case you come across the same issue. The dispersion effect can be tricky to control, so I highly recommend you test your paint first before applying it on paper. Testing the dispersion level is very easy, just take some scrap paper and give it a wash, and then add some color to the paper. If it doesn't spray much, then this paint would be easier to control. Thirdly, I'm adding a darker green color to create some depth. If you find it's not dark enough, feel free to mix it with blackish colors for more depth. Now I'm painting it directly on this damp paper, instead of waiting for it to be 100% dry. The slight dampness helps avoid the bottom color being too intense or unnatural. Then I'm taking an almost dry brush, dip it in a tint of a dark color, and paint around the bottom of the page. The brush will become drier because we are not adding extra water during this process. Then when I try it on a scrap piece of paper, we can see there is an obvious rough edge, which is ideal for what I'm going to do next. After this, I'm going to brush along the edge from one end to the other. This will create a rough edge, giving the painting a natural touch. If your stroke on the test paper doesn't have these edges, that means your brush is too wet. You can wait until it's drier and then use it to paint on your artwork. If there are any brush strokes that have rigid edges, we can smooth them out using an almost dry brush, ensuring the amount of water on the brush is less than the water on paper, and then brush in the same direction as before. Next, I'm adding some yellow color to parts of the background, blending and adjusting a little to balance out the background colors. Don't add extra water when painting this step. And now I'm adding the thick green appetite genuine again to create some more contrast and depth at the bottom. As long as we're happy with the result, we can move on to the trace. I'm using the Moon Glow paint from Daniel Smith for this chase. One color choosing tip that I want to share with you is to avoid using pure black here, unless you want to create a spooky Halloween style silhouette. The Moon Glow color is a granulation color which is dark enough for this chase, yet it also can create multiple interesting tones. It's a brownish complex color with three pigments, which is perfect for tree trunks. If you don't have this color, you could use a dark brown color instead, or try creating brown granulation color on your own using similar pigments. I paint the back row of trees right after finishing the Paris step, which means the paper is still a little damp. So you can see, when I drag the brush along the page, the boundary is bleeding into the background a little, which is natural especially if we want a foggy vibe in the forest. You can also wait until the paper is totally dry for a more controllable experience. As there is a strong light coming from the back of the forest, the tree closest to the light should be the palest tree in this painting. For this tree, what we can do is to leave a blank area in the middle and just paint the top and bottom of the tree using a very light color. Before the top and the bottom part have dried completely, you can quickly connect these two parts using a clean brush. 
The end of the brush strokes may not be perfect, so we can refine them by brushing back at the folds a few times. And also, if the amount of paint's coverage on the top and bottom parts is reduced after moving the brush towards the middle, remember to add a little light bungalow color again to enhance this tray. And if needed, you can add some to the other trays as well to make them look harmonious before they become 100% dry. Next, I'm painting the trays on the right. I start from the far right, painting a little dark tray. Then use the same brush, but adding a little water for the second tray for a much lighter color. And then we're painting the third tray, which is very close to the light. As we can see, the light is coming from the top right of the painting and it gets dimmer towards the bottom left. For the next tray, instead of leaving center blank as we did earlier, I'm going to paint only the bottom half. These slight details can help to give the painting a loose vibe whilst maintaining realistic highlights and shadows. Now I'm painting the front row of the trays. The color of this tray should be very thick, but don't make the brush too dry. Once the Monglo brown is done, I'm loading a brush with May Green from Shimenka and then dabbing the color on the side facing the light to add some detail. If you're not so sure about the outcome, keep the water low on the brush and keep the paint thick. You can try to achieve the ideal consistency on a piece of scrap paper. I didn't use a palette for the right consistency when painting this tray. And actually, I didn't use a palette for mixing any of the colors before applying them to paper. I just took the color from the tin and at most mix it on the edge of the brush washer. Most of the time when painting, I only use two tools, a brush washer and a napkin. I agree that learning to mix colors on a palette is really important for beginners to learn and I've received some feedback about it as well. And thank you guys so much for your comments. So in my future videos, I will use a palette to mix colors and record the precise. I understand that you may want to paint an outline when it's come to this trace. The good news is you don't have to paint each tray with just one stroke. And don't worry, even though the paint I'm using is staining, this method won't produce obvious unwanted boundaries. I start by painting a stroke of dark mongolo color and quickly use a damp clean brush to extend from the end of this stroke to the top of the page. We can also brush it back down for a more natural gradient. Then I'm using the first brush to refine the bottom of the tray. After I'm done with that, I'm also adding this paint to the right half of the rest of the tray. I will angle the brush in such a way that will create a clearly defined outer edge, whilst also subtly filling the inside of the tray. I'm continuing with painting the tree size before the wet tree shapes dry.
Now I'm refining the trick using the thick color. Oh, we can turn around this paper a little to whichever direction is easiest for us to paint. I'm creating a little texture on this tray as I just want to avoid making all the trays look too similar, which could end up looking stiff or unappealing. And I'm painting the last tray now. Another method is to paint two edges from top to bottom, or the other way around in two strokes. This can also create a light middle area if you want to paint sunshine shining down from the top. When tidying up the bottom of the trays, remember to create a gradient between the tray and the ground, merging them naturally. What you can do is to use a dry brush, adding the same green color used for the ground, and then brush or dab it. And this will create a bit of a grassy texture whilst hiding any unnatural tray bottom edges. If you observe my brush, you'll see it has to be dry enough to have lots of these separated tips. And then I'm using a liner brush and some thick color to add detail on the plants. When using a thin brush like this, you have to mix the paint with water on a palette. Without the right amount of liquid loaded on the brush head, it will be uncontrollable when painting details. Using a palette can help you find the ideal consistency. Now the painting is almost done, I'm painting some dreamy elements now. Um, first, I'm using a bright yellow for abstract fireflies.
The paint is very dry now, so we need to keep the brush spinning in a circular motion. Dip it in water to clean and occasionally dry the brush. You will notice the circle is getting whiter and whiter. Then use a napkin to lift and dry the color, creating a dreamy white bubble effect. Now we can apply the same technique to paint other bubbles. If you want to add some variety with yellow, first repeat the steps for the white bubbles, then add the yellow color. Finally, use a damp brush to create a blurry effect. After painting these soft bubbles, use thick white paint to add tiny dots.
Once the dyes are done, use the same white paint to add the final layer of wispy white plants. Keep it simple by using only a small amount of paint on the brush to avoid it being too thick.